And hello, everybody. This is MJ Hernandez, also known as the talk show host for This is Athletics Weekly, A's Weekly, whatever you want to call it, the first place team from the wild card team. I mean, the wild card um, race. And you guys already know how I'm feeling about the A's so far. We are 87 and 60, ready to go against the big, bad Tampa Bay Rays if the season were to end today. Cleveland is still scratching and clawing to try to get that second wild card spot. So hopefully this can be a good start to a really interesting month of September baseball. We all know September is the biggest month of baseball for those teams that are still trying to find a way to get in the playoffs the nl has an interesting situation as well we're going to talk about a lot of things matchups um injuries and debuts even of this week this big big exciting week and a big week for oakland and we're going to go more into what we have done against houston all this and this is athletics weekly All right, there you go. There's I Can Change, the FIFA 11 soundtrack song, one of my favorite songs in that game. Um, But definitely, Oakland, 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 you cannot say that enough. And you are just proud as an Oakland A's fan as you are. As you know, I am. Um, This week, very, very impressive win against the Houston Astros um, yesterday. And just the whole series, actually. Um, But we are going to just go more in depth. 87 and 60 are the athletic ready for playoff baseball it seems like they are really 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 more prepared than any other team it seems like that is going for the wild card spot the Tampa Rays are half a game behind the Oakland Athletics after losing yesterday and then the Cleveland Indians had a had no game yesterday so they have lost half a game um, yesterday after the Oakland Athletics beat the Houston um, Astros three to two Um, in this series what this i mean last episode i really went in depth about this series being the make or break series for the oakland athletics now we all know what was needed to be happen in order to succeed in this type of environment because you all know minimade park is one of the hardest places to play against these houston astros the houston astros literally only lost literally only lost one other series at home and that was with the Pittsburgh Pirates and now the Oakland Athletics beat them yesterday and won a series the second team to ever do that this season so that tells you how much the Houston Astros are good at um, Minute Maid Park they really are comfortable there if the A's want to do this right beating the Houston Astros and winning a series in Houston is one big way to do it the Oakland Athletics have claimed some ground. They have also set a tone for all the other teams in the playoffs that are already locked in in a spot that they are coming for them. The New York Yankees being one of the teams that they beat. Houston Astros again this time. And then they are just ready to go. And it seems like they have all the, the tools and the players to do it. Um, they are way more prepared last year than last year. So it looks very good. And it's very exciting to be in Oakland Athletics. So let's go let's go and get the little stuff out of the way the next games now these are the 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 last five series of the season by the time i talk to you guys next time there's only going to be one or two more weeks of baseball left regular season baseball um this week however after this episode is done we are going to cover three games at texas three games at kansas city and then i will be ready to talk to you guys when we're back to going to Texas and LA and then a four game series against the Seattle Mariners. Now, all these teams are out of contention. All these teams are out of it. They cannot possibly qualify for a wild card spot, let, let it alone 
um, a playoff run. Um, one of the teams were really actually good in the, um, so far a little bit in the, the in the year, which was the Texas Rangers. Actually, not too bad of a record, seventy four seventy four. Um, they can still technically be over five hundred, but. Man, the A's have something going for themselves. They have one of the easier schedules um, out of the three other um, wild card teams. We all know what the next um, matchups are going to be for Cleveland and Tampa Bay. Um, but it's crazy. We got the East. Um, we got the second place Eastern team division, and we got the second place Central team division, and, and the second place Western team division going at it for a wild card spot. It's a very, very big um, time competition to see which division has the best division. And so far, the West is is the best so far. Um, but we all know how quick a series can change that. Um, you never know. I mean, it, it's technically record wise, it shows that we have the easier, um, what's it called, easier schedule than the other two teams. But Texas has a quite a, quite a few um, mater- things that they can use um, against us. And they literally, literally, literally um, aren't too sh- shabby at this expense you know um if we want to talk more in particular of what texas is we are facing them two times left in this um year so all six games left with texas which is the best team um out of all the other teams that were left to play um then it will be kansas city kansas city we all know what kansas city is about they really are struggling. Um, one of the worst teams in baseball, Seattle, being the same thing as well. The Angels dealing with injuries. So Texas is literally the last good team that we have to play. Um, and they have a sneaky lineup. They, they really do. And you just got to give props to Texas for um, rebuilding technically and rearranging. It is a different Texas team that we are going to be playing. The first day um, is going to be today, the first game. I mean, uh, Brock Burke is the guy that is set up to face against Chris Bassett. Brock Burke had him a 3.52 ERA, 5.17 FIP, 12 strikeouts, and 23 in his pitch. Now, that is pro- if there is going to be a game where we can set up the tone right, today will probably be it. You know, Because the next two games, we've got Mike Miner and Lance Lynn. Two of those guys having a great season, very, very great season. They were very, 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 very well expected to be good pitchers um, for the Texas Rangers. And they have literally answered into everything. They have done everything the right way. They have been pitching and, and, and really, really, really setting the tone for Texas, making them into a relevant team. If it weren't for um, Mike Miner and Lance Lynn, this team would be all over the place because it's really, really, really impressive to see what they can do. Um, Mike Miner having a 3.08 ER Ray, 3.90 FIP, only allowing 23 home runs, which is quite a bit, but you know, with 182 innings pitched and having 183 strikeouts, it makes up for it. So, um, um, he is set to go on the second game of the series against Manaya, which is going to be a great matchup. I'm very much excited to see that matchup. Um, and the last day, Lance Lynn with the 3.72 ERA, 3.09 FIP, 17 home runs given up. The most biggest thing that pops up is the 216 strikeouts and 182, 88 in his pitch, and he is going to go against the trying to bounce back Mike Fires. Um, Mike Fires got roughed up in Houston. We'll talk more about that um, later, but um, that is going to be another good righty on righty matchup. We got the lefty on lefty with um, Mike Miner and um, Sean Manaya on Saturday, and then a great right handed matchup with Mike Fires and Lance Lynn. And this is really going to be a good series this weekend. Do not really count this series out. Don't really just put this confirmed as the Oakland A's winning, but um, the Texas Rangers are also going through some injuries. We, we let's let's look more into what the injuries are looking like. Key players. Let, let me go more in depth with the key players that are injured so far. Joey Gallo, who is not going to be available for. Um, this series, at least, he might be ready for the next series, which is going to be after the Kansas City series. Um, so Joey Gallo, one of the better power hitting um, players and one of the actually their better hitters in, in, in their lineup, period. 
you know, it, it's, it's, um, he was having a pretty good year, um, being way more patient at the plate, um, 22 home runs and really was shut down most of the year. And he's expected to come back, um, somewhere in the 20th of September, somewhere around there. That is expected. Hopefully no setbacks go in. I never wish any bad on a player. So let's see what, what, what can happen there. Um, um, Jesse Chavez is also another player who was hurt. And he is out for the year, so we're not going to see Jesse Chavez at all the rest of this year, which is probably a smarter thing for Texas because they want to keep him um, nice and handy and make sure he is not um, all over the place. So Jesse Chavez is out of the question. And then we also have Hunter Pence out, and he is in danger of missing the whole entire rest of the season with the lower back strain hunter pence was enjoying a very very big um bounce back year very very good um at what he did had his um first um all-star nod back ever since that um time when he was with the giants hitting 297 with a 358 on base percentage was was really impressive though was the swing at the bat and he was actually contributing for this team a big veteran leader and he is favorite to get um another contract or an extension with texas really really impressed with what hunter pence did got to give credit where credit's due so that is really much where the texas rangers are at in in, um injuries so um danny santana is still here um so he is a he's a guy that is going to be really really rough on the oakland athletics shin su chu someone who knows how to hit against the a's as well um, Calhoun is a very dangerous hitter as well. Odor can be risky, and he can be he can be a really really big um, contribute contribution of what this Texas Ranger team is all about. Um, but their biggest strength is definitely definitely the starting rotation with the with Lance Lynn pitching well, Minor pitching well, Allard, someone who was acquired by the. Um, Atlanta Braves is really, really enjoying his first taste of the, the big leagues and really, really pitching extremely, extremely well in his first couple of outings as a 21-year-old pitching with a 4.34 ERA, 3.15 FIP. The strikeouts have been a pretty good question, only allowed one homer in his um, first seven games as a big leaguer. So he is someone with um, big promise. Adrian Sampson, a lot of people can be hesitant with him. He gives up a lot of homers. He had that problem with Ramon Laureano. Maybe we'll face him in the next series. Who knows? You know, and with the Texas team that has nothing to lose, I wouldn't be surprised if they try to start something um, next series or even this series. You never know. Um, Ariel Jurado is also another good piece um, for the Texas Rangers. Is struggling a bit this year, but still, he is someone who is young enough to fix things, 23 years old only, and, and he's getting some innings to, to get in. And then, of course, Brock Burke, who is going to make the start um, this, um, well, actually today, sorry. I don't know if I was going to say this Saturday, but this today. He's the 22-year-old left-handed um, pitcher for Texas. But the biggest weakness, now we all know that this team is way different. This is not the team from last year. New faces, big, big new faces, especially in their pitching staff. The relievers are the biggest problem for the Texas Rangers. The bullpen is just bad. LeClerc being their better bullpen piece at the moment, you have to see how much he's struggling even with 63 innings pitched. Um, I mean, 63 innings pitched, having a 4.10 ERA, 3.65 FIP, doesn't look too bad. The strikeouts are there. 93 strikeouts. He's always been a strikeout type guy. Um, but the big thing is the walks. The walks have been big for LeClerc. Almost walks more than half his batters. So that is something that you have to be worried about. Um, he has five hit, hit um, batters as well. And Mike Miner having 189 innings, only hit seven batters. LeClerc, 63, less than more than less than half of Mike Miner's in his pitch and already has five hit batters. Now, that is something that is very concerning when you're looking at LeClerc. Now, the A's, what do they?